An Empire of Ice and Fire, a Game of Thrones audio fic, by Longclaw 1-6, Chapter 1. Before we get started, there will be sexual scenes throughout this fiction. I'm going to skip them for the majority of the time. Maybe implications, but honestly, I just feel uncomfortable reading that aloud. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. Chapter 1, A Journey to Pentos. Slicing through the still air, a decent warmth yet joined by a cooling breeze even during summer, the arrow impacted directly into the centre of the target. Only it wasn't that of the young nobleman practising. Little Arya took a bow, clutching her own bow, leading Bran to chase after her while the older boys laughed. Life may not have been perfect for the Stark clan, but it came close sometimes. All right, lads, cautioned Sir Roderick. Clear him up this mess before you head inside. Both Rob Stark and Jon Snow complied, knowing the drill. Grabbing a trio of arrows, Jon couldn't help but glance up to catch a glimpse of his father. The lone bastard in the brood of the Starks. Even the slightly pampered life of an acknowledged son couldn't make up for the missing affection provided to his half-siblings. Lord Eddard Stark loved all of his children, and Jon cherished any bit of fatherly pride he gave him. Eyebrows furrowed in confusion. Brother, why are father and Lady Stark arguing? Lady Catelyn made sure he knew of her distaste for him. Rob looked up at himself, frowning. This does not look good. They rarely argue like this. The realm was at peace, so it was rare that disputes led to such contention between the Lord and Lady of Winterfell. Even the death of Catelyn's father hadn't done so, her brother Edmure taking control of the Riverlands rather easily. I guess we'll find out when we find out. I guess we will, brother, John replied, averting his eyes upon Lady Stark's death glare sent to him. Tearing her eyes from Jon Snow, her husband's bastard, the living reminder of the shame of the normally noble warden of the North brought down upon her, Catelyn turned her back to her husband. And why, in the name of the old gods, must you do this? She tried to keep her voice down feeling it wise to not draw attention to their quarrel. Worry lines deepened on the brooding vestige of the Lord Ned Stark. I don't have a choice, Catalan. It is my responsibility to see this through. But to disappear from the north? To journey across the sea? Not a day after we found out John Arryn passed away? You cannot leave Winterfell now! We have been at peace for over a decade, Cat. Time's uncertain now, Ned. All I ask is that you stay. Lord Karstark can see to this. It is his deal that he must follow through on. His people are at stake after all. Ned frowned, slightly stunned that Catelyn would minimise his duty. Lord Karstark would do this, but the merchants in Pentos would only treat with the Warden of the North for something of this magnitude. But surely it is not your responsibility. Lady Stark had inherited the Tully stubbornness after all. I am Warden of the North. Therefore, it is my responsibility. He remembered the raven from Carhold, telling him of the outbreak of blight. Karstark and his men had eradicated it, but with the result of destroying the current year's crop, they had to get more, or else there would be starvation in their lands, or at a depletion of the stores of, for winter. There is nowhere else for Carhold to get this, their grain this late in the harvest season. Catalin grasped his arm. If this were the Vale, or even the Westerlands, I'd understand. But Pentos? You can't travel all the way to Essos simply to oversee a shipment of grain. Send one of your trusted men, or even Sir Roderick, she pleaded. I gave Lord Karstark my word, and a Stark's word is his bond. He felt hurt seeing the steely look in his beloved's eyes. Myself and my son will sail for Pentos before the end of the week. Ned might as well drop the other bombshell on his wife. You are taking Rob with you to Pentos too? I see no reason why both you and your heir should leave. If something happened to both of them, then Brown would have to assume the lordship. And he was far too young. Ned looked down at his two sons, laughing as they put away the archery equipment. How he loved them both, even if it was only one was his trueborn. No, Rob will stay here and manage my affairs in my name. It is time he gets true experience in being a lord. 
the second born that he was, he would have won this experience during the furious conflict of Robert's Rebellion. I will take John. As he expected, Catelyn visibly recoiled as if a fire had engulfed the space between them. You bastard! Why would you sully yourself with him? She hissed. The circumstances of his blood are immaterial. He is my blood of my blood. Ned hated further dishonouring himself, but he sent Plea Hat to do so. For everyone he knew and loved. I need someone strong and trustworthy to assist me on this voyage, and John is the best choice. How could you insult me in this way, Ned? Her piercing gaze turned to Jon Snow, putting away the last of the arrows. He looked up and met Catelyn's eyes once more, feeling the radiating contempt. First, you bring him to Winterfell, humiliating your faithful wife with proof of your adultery. And now you grant him the full privilege of being your son, when we all know full well he is in no such thing. Aye, he is not, Ned thought, sighing inwardly. He hated fighting with Catelyn. But John was a constant source of disagreement, to put it mildly. Look, Cat, I understand John isn't your favourite person. She huffed and crossed her arms, averting her gaze. But long ago, I made a promise that I would take care of him no matter what. He is my blood, and I love him as... Just as much as I do Rob, Sansa, and all the others. It warmed his heart that his eldest and three youngest accepted John with open arms. Though he wished Sansa wouldn't be as cold. He has no birthright, no prospects for anything other than the skills he can bear for this house. Your bastard, she spat, can join your brother at the wall. We both know that's what he wants to do. There is no more perfect place for him than the Night's Watch. To tell the truth, she had been looking forward to the day he would be shipped off there, never to be seen again by her or anyone. Ned's heart broke, thinking of John at the wall. He could, I. But what if thus it isn't his destiny? Seeing new places and learning new skills would be good for him. Give him a new outlook on life. Wanting more for his son than a dreary life at the wall, an exile to the end of the world, nor befitting what a great man John was. Ned knew he was grasping at straws, but willing to try. It is decided, Cat. I am taking John to Pentos, and that is final. Catching the pained look on his beloved's face, Ned hated to hurt her, but knew it needed to be done. The cool sea breeze whipped John's matted hair behind him, counteracting the unhindered rays of the summer sun. He rested his hands on the caravel's railing, watching the vast expanse of dark blue water as far as the eye could see, no land having been in sight since leaving White Harbour and the open arms of House Manderley. He smirked, having rather enjoyed being part of the festivities for once. Looking back at the hustle and bustle of the Manderley crew, the aging Lord Wyman more than happy to provide his fastest ship for the great Ned Stark. John knew there would be much more to enjoy about this journey. Sure, he missed his siblings, even Sansa, though he doubted she returned such feelings. But being away from the presence of Lady Stark and the other long-time stalwarts of House Stark was more than welcome. Here, out on the open sea, he was not Jon Snow, the bastard of Winterfell. He was the son of Lord Eddard Stark, Warden of the North and Wolf of the Trident. His idol along with his uncle Benjamin. Such an amazing sight, isn't it? John was interrupted out of his thoughts by the presence of his father, joining him on his right. Living inland, we don't get this sort of view. Aye. Despite knowing his father loved him, John still felt sort of cowed in his presence. Seemingly sensing the thoughts, Ned reached out and clasped the lad's shoulders, giving him a fatherly shake. John couldn't help but smile. Being away from the North for the first time, seeing everything, it puts things into perspective, doesn't it? That it does, son. That it does. John's heart skipped a beat at being called son. With the life he had, a bastard took whatever affection sent his way with open arms. John? He turned, looking at his father, studying him. 
The normally proud Eddard Stark seemed conflicted, pensive even, as if he was fighting within himself. Protocol dictated that a bastard call his father by his title, yet it was just him and his father, no one else to contradict or scold him over it. Yes, father? Opening his mouth, nothing came out. Luckily for his dignity, a yipping ball of white fur bailed Ned Stark out. The Warden of the North glanced down to find John's new direwolf, the runt of the litter, begging for attention. I see your new child is calling you, he said in a rare moment of jest. John laughed as he hefted up the pup. What's wrong, ghost? Let's see if the ship's kitchen has something for you. The pup wagged his tail excitedly as his master led him away. As soon as John was out of sight, Ned let out a breath he hadn't realised he had been holding. Was I just about to tell him? He shook his head. Now was not the time. Never the time. Ned Stark knew in his bones that trouble was on its way, and the status, status quo was the safest for all. The t- ship turned south, making course for Pentos. Blinking her eyes, the silver-haired young girl didn't think she'd heard him correctly. I am sorry, brother. I don't think I understand what you are saying. If it was what she thought it was going to be. The barely eaten lamb and vegetables dish in front of her in the style of Western Essos didn't look as appetising. Viserys laughed, a piercing, cruel laugh, as if he enjoyed his sister's confusion and dejection. Well, of course you don't understand me, sweet sister. A weak and frail woman wouldn't understand the schemings of her male betters. He speared a cube of meat on his fork, scarfing it down his skilly, skinny gullet. Unlike what the story said of the toned, muscular Crown Prince Rhaegar, his younger brother was as skinny as a reed. However, he had enough haughtiness to spare. I shall go slower for you. For the first time in our wretched life, you shall be of use to me, sister. Hands in her lap, Daenerys Targaryen avoided looking at her older brother. If she looked ungrateful, and he would undoubtedly awaken the dragon. That she grasped that he had only done so to those weaker than him, mostly women, was something he failed to see. There is nothing in the world I wouldn't do to be of use to you, dear brother. She felt his clammy hand cup her cheek, forcing her to look up. That is good. Because our near-term plans have changed. It is not I that you will marry in the near term. That did surprise Danny. As her mother had once called her in the few hours they had known each other. As with their parents and grandparents before them, Targaryens had largely upheld the custom of Aegon the Conqueror to marry siblings. Keep the bloodline pure, even though the Targaryen blood joined that of the Baratheons and Lannisters in its strength. Though she would have done it for her family, inside, Danny was relieved it was not to happen. Then, a thought hit her. Who, who am I to marry? A sickening grin, more hyena than dragon, formed on Viserys' face. The Carl of the Dothraki, barbarians. You, for an army to put me back on the throne. My birthright. Danny had to bite her lip to keep from screaming. I am not happy with this arrangement, Illyrio. Ned Stark ground out, his lips pursed into a dark glower. His northern clothes baked in the heat of the Esso sun, sensing that John would join him in relief to head outside. For now, his annoyance at the merchant distracted him from the discomfort. You were supposed to have the grain ready yesterday the morning. I don't see enough to fit even one silo. Hands clasped together underneath the flowing red-yellow shift. Illyrio Mapatis snorted. It is not I that controls the weather, Lord Stark. Nor do I have any control over the slaves that grow the wheat. Pentos has trouble feeding itself for now. Given the thin, thick neck and the flabby belly underneath the scraggly braided beard and flowing garments, John observed, the master of Pe- the Pentos Merchants Guild had no trouble procuring enough food for his table. His father was having none of it. 
Ned was normally even-tempered, even when executing the usurper deserter from the Night's Watch. John hadn't seen him bat an eyelash. Now, though, we had an agreement. Ned seethed. I will not let Carhold starve on my watch. A smirk found its way onto John's face, watching his father grip the hilt of his sword. A move seen by all. Gulping, Illyrio backtracked with a beaming smile on his face. But of course, Lord Stark, forgive me. We have been working at a vigorous pace to fill the Lord Karstark's order, but it will take more time than we expected. Letting go of the sword, Ned let out a deep breath, calming himself. And how much more time will we need? A month. Give or take a week. The harvest at Carhold, limited as it may be, can last for that long if my estimates are correct, the merchant hastily added. Sharing a look with John, who merely shrugged. Ned knew that this was the best he could do. Illyria was right. Carhold's harvest would last. It wasn't what he desired, but... All right. But given the order of this magnitude... I will oversee you fulfil the amounts you promised, both myself and my son, John. Having been preoccupied observing the strange sights of Essos, John immediately turned to his father. Not John Snow, or my bastard, but John. Essentially, Eddard Stark had claimed him as his son, without clarification. Suppressing outward emotion, inside, John was beaming. Of course, Illyrio conceded, bowing slightly to the Warden of the North and a personal friend of the King of Westeros. As a sign of my apologies for the delay, allow me to offer you and your son the use of two of my spare bedrooms. My house is at your service, and there is more than enough room to house both you and my other guests. Both Northerners raised a single brow. Other guests? Ned inquired. The Merchants' Guilds and the Bankers' Guilds in Bravos were the most powerful organisations in the Free Cities. Illyrio, who commanded his guild, wouldn't open his home to just anyone. A smile on the oily merchant's face was disconcerting to John. This was not a man to trust. Right this way, Lord Stark. He guided Ned into the atrium of the mansion, John following close behind. Allow me to introduce you to my other honoured guests. He stopped, smile widening. Ah, there she is now. Colour drained from Ned's face at the first sight of silver hair. Sitting by herself at the fountain, Daenerys still hadn't processed what her father, brother had told her. The Dothraki. All in the known world knew of them. The barbarians on horseback. Terrors and land pirates that built nothing, only sowing destruction in their wake. She was so consumed with her thoughts that she didn't spot the two northerners until they were nearly upon her. Clearly Westerosi, one sported the hardened, weathered, weathered looks of an experienced fighter, while the other was far younger and far more handsome. Danny blushed, looking away. She was beautiful. In all his life, John had never seen such an exquisite woman. But why was his father so ashen upon seeing her? Illyrio would soon dispel any doubt. Lord Stark? Allow me to introduce Princess Daenerys of House Targaryen. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed this. I want to say something. This is my ultimate favourite Game of Thrones fanfiction. Even more than the two stories I'm doing on my channel already. It's just so good. It's basically Game of Thrones, but happier. And while there is still a lot of blood, guts, gore and sex and whatnot and swearing and a whole lot of all the other stuff people like... I like that the characters are a bit happier in this. Anyway, remember to like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guy, guys, gals and non-binary pals. Make sure to check me out on Twitter as well. Have a good... Oh, I've already said that. Whoops. <laughs> anyway, bye.